This is the Jeff Santos Show. 33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show that you are tuned into. Coming to you live from the South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We're going to be uh, taking uh, your phone calls this afternoon, this uh, last half hour of the show, I should say, um, for our great friend. He is Mr. 206. For those of you not familiar with the area code, that is Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington, which has led the way on progressive issue after progressive issue, on medical marijuana, on recreational marijuana, on the $15 minimum wage, and so many other issues. Um, and it is so great to have a reporter that reflects that progressive city, that is both uh a fantastic reporter for Democracy Watch News, uh, a weekly pundit right here on the Jeff Santo Show, a great musician. That's why we call him the Renaissance Man. He can do all of it. He's MTC. He's Mark Taylor Canfield. And he joins us live from the 206, Mr. Mark Taylor Canfield. <laughs> How you doing, man? <laughs> you get the best intro in uh, in radio, dude. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, Jeff. It's it's always fun doing your show too. So best wishes, you know, to you and your family and to your listeners for the holiday season. It's been a, a lot of fun here in Seattle. We celebrated Art Walk last night and got to go to my friend Steve Gilbert's gallery, the photographer who toured with Pool Jam, and wow. has some great photos of the Ramones that he's done. And what he was doing was he was putting on a show for our other friend, Jose Rodriguez Guerra, who's world famous and, you know, former uh, member of the Washington State Arts Commission. And Jose was showing his amazing paintings. He's painted over 300 in his lifetime, so he is quite prolific. And he also has a wonderful gallery and studio down in Pioneer Square here in Seattle where I perform my music for his Art Walk events. So it was good to see the whole art and music family together celebrating all this creativity here in Seattle, which is, you know, why I moved here. I, I moved here because of the arts and because of the music. And, uh, and you know, we were talking a lot about how it's very different here than in L.A. or New York. Uh, you know, some of the people I deal with in L.A. are all about the money and all about oh, yeah. the fame. And the Look at me. Hard, Look at the mirror. Look at here. me. Yeah, not Alan yeah. Minsky, not our good friends who live in L.A., uh, David Dayen, and, of course, uh, our our, uh, our new good friend, uh, Donald Cohen. But, uh, you know, those are the exceptions. Uh, but there are a lot of people that love to, look at me, look what, look, I, I, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a whole different it's world. It's all man. about, yeah. It's all, it's all about, about the fame and the money rather I. than the music. And I find that here in Seattle, even with my friend's band, you know, the Black Tones, who are getting a lot of attention, they, they still are, they keep it real, they're very authentic. People do music in Seattle because they love music, not because they want everybody to pay attention to them, you know. That's okay if you do, but uh, it's about the music, and that's why I love it here. There's so many great bands here. Sheena Shepard and Bear Axe is so incredible. The Martial Law Band, uh, um, Eldridge Gravy, and the Court Supreme. There's so many great bands here that we all love, and we love to support when they play out, so... It's good to see the bands out again and the clubs open. A lot of them are selling out, actually, so it's good. It's really good to see that. It's back. It, Seattle's it, back on the rocks. It is. That's great to hear, man, and it's important because that's uh, that's a big reflection of the city. Hey, want to start off with um, the political piece here. Uh, you know, our good friend Peter from all the way across the country in Florida, man, that's, that's 3,000 miles plus. He... Um, he uh, had just emailed me and had sent me a notice earlier about uh, Ms. Sawant and that she's coming back. She is a great fighter. And, you know, a lot of the Democrats on Capitol Hill, and you can tell them about Ms. Sawant uh, if you want uh, callers and listeners of the Jeff Santo Show, 202-225-3121. Um, you know, it is, to me, it is, to me, a, a real show of gumption, of as Eddie Vedder plays in the Tom Petty cover that we play all the time, I won't back down. That is the city councilor. Uh, and, you know, ton of money against her, you know, Bezo money and all this stuff. This, to me, is just a great, great story. Now, of course, we don't know how it will end up, but, I mean, she's a fighter. I know you know a lot about this. Uh, our good friend Peter, uh, again, sent a donation uh, to uh, Ms. Sawant. Uh, I guess he hears you talk about it. He's researched it. 
you know, she is an example of the true FDR, as he said. And, you know, she's not afraid to say that she's a democratic socialist. Um, but she's a fighter, and that's what we need more of. Uh, go ahead and explain a little bit of what's the... Uh, what's actually happening there in this recall well she as i said before is the most effective member of the seattle city council in my lifetime i mean she's been able to pass so much helpful legislation uh, for the working class and the poor she was able to get uh the corporate tax on amazon that you know was was rescinded she got it passed once and then the rest of the city council except for her voted to rescind it after getting probably i, I assume you know, uh, frantic phone calls from Jeff Bezos's people in the middle of the night, but she was able to bring that back, um, create some money for affordable housing because, you know, Seattle, like a lot of other major cities, is experiencing a huge homelessness crisis here. Um, she's been able to extend the moratorium on evictions during this pandemic and economic downturn. Uh, Seattle has a lot of money actually set aside for um, renters who are not able to, able to pay their rent, so some really good programs. Martin Luther King Junior County also has some of those programs, and some of it is federally funded as well, so we can thank our uh, our member of Congress, Pramila Jayapal, for pushing those through. But yeah, Shama Samaram has been, uh, in, in some ways, a divisive figure because the conservatives and the business interests just love to hate her because she is very vocal about the fact that she's a democratic socialist. Uh, yes, she does get a lot of support from Bernie Sanders when he's in town. He, you know, he's usually uh, seen with her and supporting her in her campaign, along with Pramila Jayapal. The three of them are quite a powerhouse here. And so, you know, I know he's had his eye on this election, too. Uh, he also endorsed Teresa Mesqueda, uh, another city council member, a very progressive member of the city council, who did get reelected, so that's good news. But it looks like, um, you know, this effort by the corporate business uh, class in Seattle uh, to take her down has not worked. Uh, they blamed for all sorts of things. They said she brought uh, protesters, Black Lives Matter marchers, into City Hall uh, without permission and opened the door for them. Uh, you know, and I wanted to point out that, yeah, I was one of those people. <laughs> I got up on stage and performed one of my songs, and uh, it was a great, peaceful rally. We all left uh, peacefully. There was no property damage, you know, no graffiti anywhere. Nothing happened, not unlike what happened in Washington, D.C. On, on January 6th. So that was kind of a false flag. That was a red herring. And then, you know, she's been accused of using her city council position uh, for these some of these campaigns, you know, and all she can say is, yeah, okay, I'm guilty of trying to, you know, support a corporate tax. I'm guilty of trying to support uh, people and keep them from being evicted. I'm guilty of supporting a $15 minimum wage, which is now which is now a national movement and she you know i'm not surprised that she got a donation from one of your callers because she does have a national and international following i was actually published in the india first post in india because of her so they love her in india too where she was born she actually has a phd in economics and also attended college in uh in mumbai before she moved to the united states she's actually she was a college teacher at seattle central college before she became a city council member. She was out there on the streets, just like Pramila Jayapal, as one of the activists with a bullhorn, scaring the crap out of the status quo. Well, she got elected, and so did Pramila, and now they're actually doing good things for, the, for their constituents. Um, this recall election, uh, which was partially funded by some uh, a lot of money, millions of dollars that came in from out of the state uh, in PAC money, she, it looks like she's going to beat it. And it reminds me a lot of the, the first campaign that she ran, uh, I remember being at her election uh, party that night, and the media was all predicting her that she had lost to the longtime incumbent Richard Conlon, and you know she wasn't going to get elected. Well, by the next day, you know she'd beaten him, and he was giving a concession speech. So same thing happened again. Uh, the local media here was counting her out, counting her down, just like you know some boxing <laughs> match where you know she's not going to get up again, but she did. And it looks like she's going to win, Jeff. So that is a very good thing, I think, for Seattle. It would have been a real loss um, for the city and for the city council to lose their most progressive member and the, the biggest fighter for the people. The one thing I think, you know, she she's such a great example for other public officials because when whenever we're at a city council meeting, when when she's speaking, she doesn't speak to her fellow council members or, or city hall uh, staff. She speaks to the crowd. I mean, she always reaches out to the people who are there gathered in the audience um, to support her and her constituents are the main reason why she's been successful. And she says that over and over again, if it weren't for the feet on the ground, if it weren't for the folks outside the political system supporting her, she wouldn't be there. So she understands 
that her power comes from the people and without her constituents, uh, she's, she's nothing. So that's great to see that in a public official. I'm glad to see that she won. I was definitely, you know, chewing some fingernails and sweating it out there at the last minute, getting kind of cynical about the whole thing, thinking here, once again, big money is going to w- control our electoral process. But it looks like right now it's very, very close. But the, but most of the media was counting her out just even just a few days ago, saying like, no, she's not going to be able to beat this money. The polls were against her. But there was a last minute effort by a lot of people in her district in District Three to fight the recall. So I think it, it's looking good. And once again, as you as you described her, she's a fighter, and you can't keep her down. I just wrote a song. I should rename it Shama Song. But one of the lines is. When she stood her ground, you just can't keep that woman down. And I think that's what she almost want. You, you can't keep her down. She's, she's a fighter for the people, and I'm glad that she's there. I'm glad she's, she's a friend and that she supports me in what I do. And, and I will be at, at her next uh, probably election rally, you know, playing some music to try to raise money for her because I think she deserves it. So hey, good lay, news lay, lay the track yeah. down, man. I will b- gladly do backup vocals for you. <laughs> yeah, Bring you it know. on. Let's do uh, why, why not? Why not? Well, I just think it's it's so important to have somebody who has has shown time and time again that uh, you know you you think you you got me down, but I am not giving up. I'm fighting back, and I'm going to win. And I like the fact that you said that she constantly goes to the people and not tries to play chummy. Oh, I want to be your friend. Let's go out for Starbucks coffee in the afternoon and figure out how we can make more money on the side here. And that kind of stuff that you know goes on not only in Seattle City Council but uh, across the across the country. You know these folks that just want to go along to get along, and 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 this this to me is representative. Of, and and the, you've mentioned Jaya Paul, and of course we know about Bernie. There are a few people like this. You know, I mean, a lot of what the political game is, and I understand it, and I've seen it up close and personal. You know, I ran oh, yeah, for office, too. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah exactly. exactly. You know, a lot of these folks, you know, they, they, they want to be chummy. You know, they, they want to get on a slate. They want to be, you know, oh, I'm with uh, Bob and Sheila and, you know, and, and Joan and, and, uh, and Bobby. Um, you know, whatever names you want to throw in there. And the, the goal of, is to get things done. You know, I mean... Yeah, look, not, I'm not saying that you can't be friendly. I'm not saying that you can't, you know, form alliances. That, that's not what I'm getting. I'm not saying anybody has to be a lone ranger here. But you're not going to get things done if your goal is just to sort of get along. You know, it's just, well, I, I, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll take, uh, you know, the, 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 the easy way out and, and, you know, and back corporate America and, you know, and take Bezos money and take Starbucks money and Gates and so forth. And, and, and I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to cause uh, any, any harm here. And that's what ends up happening it's too often, as you know, Mark. Well, you got it right. You know, she is a great example in that regard. She accepts no corporate money for her campaign. So she is a true populist grassroots organizer. She also understands coalition politics. So uh, whether whether or not she's a democratic socialist or whatever her you know political stripes are, she's willing to work with small business, with labor unions, with Democrats, with anybody who seems to be out for the little guy and, and the little girl because, you know, she's tired of seeing the corporate um, factions here and the corporate entities push people around and get these mayors elected and bank- bankrolling them so that they support all the real estate developers who want to tear the showbox theater down, you know, where our favorite lady, you know, where Muddy Waters and Duke Ellington is played. She's not that kind of politician. She She's not afraid, though, to be controversial. So... I think her attitude is that, you know, if you're going to go down, you got to go down fighting, right? Maybe, you know, they might eventually be able to replace her, but you know what? She's not going to go away quietly, and I'll bet you she'll be back and running for some other office or, or doing something else that will really make a difference in this town because that's just the kind of person she is. She's dedicated uh, her life to this uh, goal of hers to try to change the, the system in the United States and get people the real help that they need. When you got all these corporate billionaires running around who don't give a damn about the working class, who don't give a damn about people living on the streets, you know, all they want is their fancy cars and mansions. She's she's not interested in that. She's interested in representing the working class. And I think as long as she stays true to that vision, which she has through the entire time she's been in office, she's never backed down on that. I think as long as she stays true to that, just like Bernie Sanders, just like Ilhan Omar, AOC, and some of the others, Presley and those, I think she's going to do well because that's what got her elected. So that's the other 
thing. She's smart enough to realize what what got her elected, and she's not going to burn those bridges. She doesn't care whether the corporations support her. They weren't going to support her anyway, right. no matter what she does. So she might as well just go with the people and, you know, stand with Black Lives Matter and the, the carpenters who were striking this year and anybody, you know, and the musicians who are trying to keep the show box from being torn down. Those, those are the people she wants to work with, and that's where she gets her strength. So I think she's probably really happy today, and I bet you a lot of the corporate people are just grumbling and kicking their dog or whatever because they, they don't like the idea that a democratic socialist is on the city council. But in, she's in no way some radical Marxist revolutionary. She is working with... Uh, people in a real politique kind of way. She knows how to get things done. She's a lot like Bernie in that way. She's not calling for any kind of radical agenda. She just wants to help people as much as she can. And as long as I see her doing that, I'm going to have to give her some positive creds in my reporting because, you know, no matter what happens, I always end up reporting on her because she's the one who gets things done. And, of course, that's where I'm going to be reporting. I'm not going to be reporting on things that don't happen. I'm going to be reporting right. exactly. on the $15 an hour. Well, as, as I said earlier, you know, strong and wrong beats weak and right. You know, nobody wants to be with a loser uh, just because they're nice, uh, just because, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll go along again. No, we, we've seen enough of that. We've seen enough Democrats lose elections uh, because they don't want to fight, uh, and they don't want to fight for the, the work years of America. And, we, and we've seen it, and we've seen how... You know, people who can gather together, who can unionize. We saw what happened at Starbucks yesterday. I don't think people in, in uh, the uh, see the uh, capital of Starbucks there in Seattle were very happy with uh, unionization in uh, Buffalo <laughs> yesterday. But uh, that's, that's that an smart. example of what you can do. Uh, folks, before we forget, I want to take a couple of calls, uh, John and Tom, in uh, Minneapolis and Los Angeles. But the White House phone number, again, for those of you who didn't hear it, 202 202- Four five six one 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 one. Got to put the pressure on Biden to go ahead and, and and come out every day over the next thirty days. He's got to dedicate to getting voting rights passed. This is this is his mission. He cannot fail because if he fails, the country fails. Again, two zero two four five six one 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 one. With that, let's go to Minneapolis and uh, bring in our good friend John uh, from the Twin Cities. You're next with Mark Taylor Canfield. Of course, you got another stalwart there that doesn't back down uh in miss omar yeah yeah she's uh she's a very active uh representative and uh um she does a lot of work and uh i hope that she is uh going to be my representative for many years to come um but i would like to say you know yeah the the, the uh filibuster needs to go voting rights needs to uh, be a priority, and uh, if that doesn't get done, I really worry, because as other callers have said or in, intimated, you know, the the uh, Republican Party, they're, they're not really a, uh, a political party, not in the sense that wants to get anything done. They're only interested in power, That's right. and so we need to fight back. That's the only way that you can do it. This is like a fight uh, or a war that they're at war with us. Uh, when you make stupid comments like uh, Bobart at, you know, toward my <coughs> congresswoman, uh, you know, my congresswoman is interested in serious legislation, and <coughs> you know, she's not interested in that kind of uh, name calling and and uh, you know, I don't know what what Bobart thinks she's doing. I guess she thinks she's very amusing but it yeah really she's trying to trying to, trying to trying to trying to you know make uh make a point with the trump crowd that's what she's all about and then it, if you it, get your money yeah. from and that's all she cares about that's all it is there's nothing yeah, about people who are just it, right. it brings a level of politics down in this country to the gutter. Uh, to, uh, yeah and it makes us look you know we're supposed to be the wealthiest most powerful democracy in the world and the rest of the, of the world I think when they hear what's going on in our politics, they just scratch their head uh, and and look at us like, wow, uh, talk about degeneration there. You know, there's a problem. We have a problem. And we, we have this party that we're married to, the Republican Party. We have a two-party system. And they would just like to have complete control and power. They don't care if... The pandemic goes away. They don't care if children are fed. They don't care uh, if, uh, you know, health care is done properly, if uh, the school systems run, if the bridges, you know, don't fall down. That's irrelevant to them. Uh, they, they're into a freak show. That's what they want because it gets them 
eyeballs to their, you know, to them. I mean, it's all about them. It's a, like a cult. Essentially, it certainly and, and is, it's and, uh, and it's it's yeah. uh, it's a sad state of affairs. But that's where our politics are in uh, in yeah. the in the you know twenty twenties and twenty twenty one. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, John. Uh, Mark, I'm you know, it, John, that Elhan Omar and Amy Klobuchar uh, want to nominate Prince for a, a post hum post uh, congressional medal of, medal of honor. That would be so cool. I would love to see that. Such a great yeah, uh, I, artist. You know. Yeah, I think that would be what, you know, everybody loves Prince. He's known throughout the world. Uh, you know, it's a very uh, good thing to do, for sure. I, and I, I I like him myself. Everybody here, you know, just really, uh, yeah, he's, you know, he's likes. He's a uh, great representative of your Prince. city and state. Yep, yep. No yep. doubt. Uh, thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to take another quick call from uh, John here, uh, from uh, Tom, I should say, in L.A., but... Um, Basically, I, I will say this, uh, Mark. I, I think that what Sawant brings is a lot of energy um, to the progressive movement, who, again, has taken all the punches and, again, won't back down. And I think that politicians nationwide should take a listen to this. And if she wins, I, I not only do I want her on my show, and if you can help make that happen, Mark, I appreciate it. Um, but I also think that she needs to be in front of the the Washington inner circle and the elite and to say this is how you do it this is how you fight back within the Democratic Party and this is how you beat Republicans too all right with that let's go to Tom and uh, before we go to Tom I just want to say I love LA but there is some elements of that that I think are true go ahead Tom you're next with MTC <laughs> Actually, first off we the people are the government and we must never forget that uh, Mark I got a question for you when this um this, uh, the woman that's running, a uh, woman that is uh, in your uh, city is council, a politician, yeah, city council. Is she just saying? Because the one thing I really don't like with the Dems when they say we don't take any corporate or PAC money, I would much rather them go on the offense and say I want to get money out of politics because I think that they have a different message to it than I don't. Take I agree. Corporate Money. I, I I don't I don't know this to be a fact, and I'll let Mark answer it. But in my opinion, she is on exactly that that uh, motto is that we want money out of politics. Uh, Mark, uh, go ahead. You know more about her than I do. Yeah, I mean, she would agree with you, uh, it, but she's stuck in a system where they're throwing so much at her that she has no choice but to try to raise as much as she can. But the thing is, is that uh, she's always stayed true to her principles, and the fact that she doesn't accept corporate money is one reason why she has so much support, because you don't find politicians often that are like that. You know, you, we remember when um, Barack Obama said that he wasn't going to accept, you know, <laughs> Uh, those, the PAC money, and then he did, you know, that tends to be what happens, and it, it happened here. We have our democracy vouchers in Seattle where we're each mailed uh, $100 by the city. It's a publicly funded election for city offices here, and um, unfortunately, some of the candidates for the city council decided to go beyond that and start raising money outside of that system, and I wish that everyone would just agree to have publicly funded elections. I say this over and over again. When I was in the U.K., and they had the parliamentary elections. Those elections lasted about a month, and there was a very strict limit on the amount of money that could be spent, and most of it was publicly funded. So if we can get to that point, I think Shama Sawant would love that because she doesn't want to spend all of her time raising money. It's a yep. big distraction. This recall election has been a huge distraction. I mean, that might be one of the strategies that the business Yeah, she could be doing a lot of great things. By yeah, the way, just okay. quickly, just got a, a couple of seconds here. Uh, people want to know, is she able, is she an American citizen where she could end up being president someday? You know, first mayor, she maybe then American governor? American citizen, but she was not born in the United States, so no. But okay. Check out uh, the Black Count folks. They're going to do a great show at the Paramount, uh, the 30th anniversary of Nirvana's performance there. A lot of great music in Seattle. You can check me out on YouTube, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Thanks, Jeff, and have a great weekend. You guys rock. Thank you, man. You do, too. I want to thank Ron Kreider for producing this broadcast. Thank you all. The best calls today, I tell you, folks, best callers, best listeners in radio. Keep on fighting. Have yourself a great weekend. Mark, you do the same. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now it is my time to say I'm going to go. The nation has honored Bob Dole at his funeral. 
President Biden, Vice President Harris, former President Clinton, three former vice presidents and top leaders from both parties gathered at Washington National Cathedral to remember the former senator and Republican presidential candidate. Bob Dole was a man of his word. He loved his country, which he served his whole life. Dole, who died last weekend at age 98, was remembered for his civility, decency, and humor, and for his service in war and politics. Greg Clugston, Washington. Also at srnnews.com, the new German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has held talks in Paris and in Brussels on issues including Eastern European tensions. Correspondent Charles de la Desma has more. Schultz has met with French President Emmanuel Macron as both nations are making efforts towards the de-escalation of tensions between Russia and Ukraine. The leaders spoke during Schultz's first visit abroad after his coalition government was sworn in earlier in the week. The German Chancellor is next in Brussels to meet with European Union and NATO officials. Schultz says, we all view the situation on the Ukraine border with concern. The talks come as President Joe Biden this week moved to take a more direct role in diplomacy between Ukraine and Russia. I'm Charles Tuladesma. And this is SRN News.